Hello, everybody. Today we are going to be going over part of section 3.5 from your geometry textbook. I am currently in your student journal on page 88. Okay, so a couple of things that I want to remind you of when it comes to um, linear equations um, is that we should know a couple of different forms of lines. So first of all, we have what's called the slope intercept form. And we should know slope intercept form to be y equals mx plus b, where the value of m represents your slope. And the value of b helps you to find the y intercept. A uh, slope is a value that we find by counting the rise over the run. Um, you can also find slope by using the formula um, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, which is ultimately just the difference in the y's over the difference in the x's. That uh, little triangle just means delta, which stands for difference. Um, but most of the time, we are thinking about it using one of these two methods here. Okay, uh, y-intercept is where the graph crosses the y-axis. That is going to be a point um, designated by zero, comma your b value. So your y-intercept should be on the y-axis. Something to remember about that. Okay, so um, what's one thing to know about slope-intercept form is that it gives you the steepness of the line, um, which kind of tells you at what angle your line is going through. Now, we have been talking about parallel lines, and we will, in Section 3.3, talk a little bit more um, about parallel lines and perpendicular lines as we go through the rest of the chapter. Um, there are two theorems written down below that you are or are or could be familiar with from Algebra 1. And it's a theorem dealing with slopes of parallel lines and a theorem dealing with slopes of perpendicular lines. Now remember, you don't need to worry about these theorem numbers. Um, I won't refer to the theorems by the theorem number. The first theorem, slopes of parallel lines, it says in the coordinate plane, two non-vertical lines are parallel if and only if they have the same slope. So basically, if lines are parallel, they're going to have the same slope. Um, and you can see these two lines over here have the little parallel marks there. Um, and they say the um, m1 equals m2. They're just saying that the slope of line 1 is equal to the slope of that second line. Okay, So parallel lines will have um, the same slope, um, but they will always have different y-intercepts because if they had the same slope and the same y-intercept they would be exactly the same line therefore they would not be parallel <laughs> okay slopes of perpendicular lines um it says in the coordinate plane two non-vertical lines are perpendicular if and only if the product which means multiply of their slopes is negative one okay so here you can see in this picture here we have two lines marked with a uh, right angle there telling me that they're perpendicular. So that means that if you take the slope of one line and multiply it to the slope of the second line, it equals negative one, okay? So for example, if the slope of line one was one third, then the slope of line two would have to be just a sec. Sorry, I didn't quite catch that. If the slope of line one was one third, in order for it to multiply to be negative one, the slope of line two would have to be negative three. So another way to think about this is that the slopes are what we call opposite 
because they're opposite signs and they're also the reciprocal of each other. So they are opposite reciprocals. Um, the Y intercept on these could be the same. It could be different. Um, so for these ones, I'm not going to mention anything about the Y intercept, but again, for example, um, another thing, uh, example here, if the slope of line one is um, negative two thirds, then the slope of line two is going to be opposite sign. So it's positive and the reciprocal three halves. Um, one more to think about would be if the slope of line one is zero. Okay, then the slope of line two Okay, there is no negative zero, but, um, and then again, if I take the reciprocal of zero, that's gonna be one over zero. Well, one over zero is not um, a value that is defined, so it's actually undefined. Just to give you a few examples. Um, and this type of problem here would be if you graphed a horizontal line and a vertical line, it would look almost like the x and y axis exactly okay so just to give you an example of that all right let's do a couple of examples we're not going to do all the different types of problems but let's look at number three um so i'm on the next page of the student journal on number three so follow along it says determine which of the lines are parallel and which of the lines are perpendicular um there are um all kinds of lines in this picture okay um Let's look at line uh, P and line Q. We're not gonna do all of them, we'll just do some of them. Line P and line Q, and let's talk about their relationship. Are they parallel or are they perpendicular? Or maybe they're neither, okay? Maybe they have no relationship um, at all. Okay, so let's go ahead and compare their slopes. Remember, one way that you can find slope is by counting the rise over the run. So to count the rise over the run, so let's do the slope of line P, okay? I'm gonna start at one point on line P and I'm gonna to go to the other point counting rise over run. You can use any two points on that line. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna count up one, two, three, so that's my rise. And then my run is one, two, three to the right. So rise of positive three, run of positive three as well. Okay, uh, remember if you count down, that would be a negative rise. If you count to the left, that would be a negative run. So that means the slope of line P equals one. Let's look at Q. So for Q, I'm going to do, um, start at this point and I'm gonna do my, run, my rise first. Always do your rise first. So one, two, three. Since I counted down, that's going to be a negative three. So my slope of line Q is going to be um, a negative three for the rise because I counted down three. And then I'm going to go left one, two, three. So that means that it's a negative three because I counted to the left. But that simplifies to a one. So you can see that when we're comparing line P and line Q, that they are in fact parallel because they have the same slope, okay? So you can continue on by finding the slopes of the other lines, right? We have um, the slope of line R, the slope of line S, and the slope of line T. Let's um, take a look at those. So for um, line R, I would go down one, two, maybe you wanna highlight the points that you're using because there's a lot going on here. Um, a lot of lines, right? So I'm gonna go down one, two, three. So down three, right? One, two, three, four, negative three fourths, okay? Um, and then line S. So for line S, I'm gonna use a different color here so I don't get confused. So for line S, I'm gonna use this point here and this point here. I'm gonna go down one, two, three. So that's negative three to the right, one, two, three. So I get negative one, okay? 
And then finally for line T, I'm going to use this point here and this point here. I'm going to count down one, two, three, and then I'm going to go to the right one, two, three, four. So down three, right four. So down three, right four. So negative three fourths. Okay, so we can see the slopes that are the same will be parallel. So since P and Q have the um, same slope, we can say that P is parallel to Q. Um, R and T also have same slope. So I can say R is parallel to T. Um, when it comes to perpendicular, perpendicular mean if you took the slopes and you multiply them together and you get negative one, um, you would get um, perpendicular. You can also think of it as opposite signs and reciprocal, whichever way works best for you. But I can see by multiplying the slope of P and S together, I would get a, um, a product of negative one. So I can say that P is perpendicular to S. Same thing happens with Q and S. So Q is also perpendicular to S. Okay. For number four, number four, it says tell whether the lines through the given points are parallel, perpendicular, or neither. Justify your answer. So for these two lines, they don't give you the graph, um, but you could absolutely graph them and count if you wanted to. Um, you could also use the formula for slope, which is taking the difference in the y's over the difference in the x's. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and use the formula just so you can see a different example. If you want to try this on your own before I do it, it's a good time to pause the video and try it out. So the x1, y1 just deals with the x and y value of the first point. The x2, y2 just deals with the second um, points, x and y values. So I'm going to do um, 2 minus 0 for line 1. And then I'm going to do negative 2 minus 2 for the difference in the x's. So that gives me 2 over negative 4, which is negative 1 half when I simplify. Now let's compare that to the slope of line 2. For the slope of line 2, I'm going to do uh, y2, which is 4, minus y1, which is a negative 2. So it ends up being 4 minus negative 2. And then x2 minus x1, 4 minus 1. So that ends up being 4 plus 2 because the double negative changes to plus. So that gives me 6 over 3, which is 2. And I can see that they're not the same, so they're definitely not parallel. If I multiply negative 1 half times 2, that's going to give me uh, negative 2 over 2, which is negative 1. So I'm definitely going to have uh, perpendicular lines here. So I can say that uh, line 1 and line 2 are, in fact, perpendicular. Um, the answer would be neither if they weren't the same and the uh, product of them was not uh, negative 1. Okay, let's take a look at number um, uh, number five. Okay, um, on number five, it says write an equation of a line passing through point three, negative two, that is parallel to y equals two thirds x minus one. It tells you to graph it, but um, I'm gonna check my graphing using Desmos instead of graphing it by hand, so you can do that as well. Okay, so here we go. Um, here's my line. If I want the second line, okay, if I want the second line to be parallel, it needs to have the same slope. So if I'm looking at y equals mx plus b, if the slope is the same, it's going to be two-thirds. So I know my m is going to be two-thirds. The problem is I don't know what my y-intercept is. So that means I don't know B. But what I do have is I have an X value and I have a Y value. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug those in and you'll see what happens when I plug in negative two for Y 
and I plug in 3 for x, the only variable that's left is b. So now I'm going to be able to find b, and then I will plug it in here to get my final answer. So simplifying this, 2 thirds times 3 um, is just going to be 6 over 3, which is 2, plus b. Subtract 2 on both sides, that cancels, and you see I get b equals negative 4. So there's your value of b. So you're going to go ahead and you're going to plug that in, and it's going to look like this. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Desmos, and they have a graphing calculator there that I can use going to Desmos. Um, so I have y equals 2 thirds x, oops, 2 thirds x, and um, recalling what my problem was, was 2 thirds x minus 1. There's that first line they gave us. My line I found was y equals 2 thirds x minus 4. And you can see there that they are parallel. So you can use Desmos um, to check if your answer is correct. Now for number six, um, they're asking you to find a line that is perpendicular. So you're going to do the same approach. I'm not gonna do the whole problem, um, but you're going to do the same approach except for your y equals mx plus b. In order for the line, to, the new line to be perpendicular to this line, you need your slope to be the opposite sign, so it needs to be negative, and it needs to be the reciprocal. Right, and again, we don't know what B is, so you're gonna have to use this X and Y value to get to your final answer um, in order to find B, okay? Now I said I wasn't gonna do this, but I'm gonna go ahead and quickly plug in the X and the Y here so that you know if you have the right answer or not. What negative one half and negative two becomes positive one. B subtract the one on both sides is going to be a one. So I end up getting an answer of y equals negative one half x um, plus one. Those are my that's my answer there. Here's my answer here. And again, you don't need to graph it, um, but you can definitely use uh, Desmos to check your graph. That's what I would highly recommend. Yeah, so use the Desmos to check your graphs. That'll be absolutely very helpful. So um, I hope that this video um, helps you with your practice. Um, please come to support if you have any questions and um, best of luck with your big ideas assignment.